Hi and welcome to the Kawaii Stitch Witch's Cauldron. My name is Lisa, aka the Kawaii Stitch Witch. We're gonna be making a very important piece of cosplay. A bodysuit. Sometimes it can be kind of stressful to make sure that it fits right, or if the one at Party City doesn't work, or if it's the wrong color, um, or if the pattern that Yaya Han just doesn't work. I'm gonna show you a pretty easy way how to make it. Stay tuned for more. And let's get started. I have all of my measurements out to the public, but um, this is what I did um, in my design portion. My neck is going to be wrapped, the shoulders are going to be open, there's going to be velcro and buttons and everything. Um, these are my real measurements. Alright, and if you want to put your measurements onto this template, just measure at the widest part or the smallest part of yourself and cut them in half. And when you double the fabric over, it's the full measurement, get it? Um, right here, the, the, the uh, leg holes, I sort of imagined it as a pair of panties where the front is a little bit shorter than the back because the back covers your butt more and that transfers over to the leg a bit. For here we have the arm. This curve is very important. It should be a shallow curve, but still an S shape. Um, and also the elbow is important so we can have points of interest so we can orient ourselves later. Same with the leg. Um, as I said before, the leg attaches to the hip and it all works together um, and oh this is where I'm talking about my inseam my inseam is that I want to say it's 30 but it's more like 27 because the heel takes up about three inches and when I do the foot it's gonna be way too long if I measure the full 30 inseam over here I have the curve of my back all the way from shoulder to crotch um, because you're 3D and it wraps around and if you don't have extra for the crotch then it's gonna be very tight. Um, so this is the full wrap around. So all together it's 58. One side is gonna be 29. So to the left it's gonna look quite long in the crotch because it's going underneath you. Um, and yeah, that's how I measured everything. Let's cut this, let's cut the fabric. Well, transfer the measurements to the fabric. Um, first, start, starting with the body. Um, I'm going to take the widest part of me, or the longest part, start from there, make a box, about 28 and a half. Um, also, this, this material is very stretchy, so if it is a little bit short, it's no big deal, it'll stretch out, but I found the widest part of me, that'll be the hips, and then just make it a box because it's going to be encompassed in this box and then I have to take out the parts that are not me. It's like sculpting! Um, yes. Uh, so I have the widest part and now I'm going down the center because I want this to be symmetrical. Um, so I want both sides to be the same and I'm just measuring out the widest part divided by two and I'm going in increments down and now I have my center line. It's very important at this point to remember that the shoulders are the enclosure so those need to be a bit longer. I think I didn't realize that here and I just started going for the shoulder. Um, the shoulders also slope downwards so those need to come down at least two or three inches from the top of the neck. Um, otherwise, you will have very poofy or very tall shoulders. Um, there's a natural slope that you must follow. Um, and I'm just taking five inches, which is from my neck to my shoulder, measuring that out, leaving the, the rest of the room for my neck um, in the, the shoulder area and just going all the way down from neck to waist that's my next 
uh, orient orientation, um, because that's uh, my next uh, well big measurement. That's where my waist is, and that is twenty six. So I'm gonna measure what is it six and a half on either side of the center point and mark in pins. I was going to use chalk, but I couldn't find it, and pins show up a little bit better anyways, so um, it's probably a little easier to use chalk if you wanted to use chalk. Going on to the hip part, um, uh, it's, I sort of guessed a little bit on how far away my hip is from my waist. Or I, I probably measured it, um, but that is the widest part. It goes to the very edge of the box. Um, I'm just re reorienting all of the pins so that it looks more natural and hourglassy. Um, again, I did mark where the where the hips were, so I knew where the widest part is. What am I looking at? I'm looking at something. Come back. Oh, I'm probably looking for a shirt. Um, shirts are a good guideline in all of this. I used the armhole. Yeah, there it is. I used the armhole to guesstimate about the curvature that it should be. Because if it works on the shirt, it should work on the fabric. And it just so happens that this shirt has a particularly small armhole, which I was looking for, and I just sort of followed the curve of the armhole, and now I have my armhole curve. Just to be on the safe side, I measured um, how big it is from across my chest, just to be sure that um, it fits properly because the shirt is a bit baggy um, as opposed to this which is going to be skin tight and across the chest is 13 inches so I had to make sure that it was well I think it was 13 inches well that, that it was the same on both sides and just making sure that the chest measurement is okay making sure everything's even um, I think I'm actually gonna fold this over eventually to make sure it's very symmetrical. It didn't end up symmetrical, I don't know how. I folded it over, but... Oh yes, the leg hole. I did measure from... Where did I measure? I think I measured from about where I wanted the leg hole to start on top versus the bottom where the crotch is, and I think that was about 8 inches. So if you wanted to, you can take a pair of your underwear or something and line that up and follow those lines, that'd probably be much easier. Um, but I like to eyeball things most of the time, and here... I have the curves, and it looks like the photo, or the drawing, and I'm just gonna line it up a bit better. Um, once everything is cut and sewn, uh, it's just a matter of trying it on a lot, and taking it in, or letting it out where you need to. <laughs> and this is the first part of the bodysuit. The body. And all of its bodiness. Oh no, I didn't cut it out. I didn't I didn't center it. I didn't center it. Oh no, that's why it was a little bit crooked. Oh. Uh, yeah, if if you guys are doing this at home, well, also give yourself some extra shoulder room because we need to fold that over for some velcro later for the enclosure. Um fold it over <laughs> down the center. <laughs> To be sure that it is symmetrical. Unless you're not symmetrical, in which case, just follow whatever you were doing. Whatever I was saying. And just cutting this out. 
Um, I'm d I don't really give myself seam allowance on spandex things because it stretches, and usually I don't really need seam allowance because it stretches. If it doesn't stretch, you probably want seam allowance. Quarter inch or a half an inch, but in this case, I don't need it. What are you doing? Oh, I did fold- I did fold it over. I was sort of smart. I was sort of smart, yay. What are you doing? But I did cut a little bit too far. Why'd you do that? On the shoulder. So here I am patching this cut. I just took some regular thread and a regular needle. I knotted it on one end. And I'm just gonna do a whip stitch through the entire thing. And if you don't know what a whip stitch is, it is going through in one direction on one side and going through the other direction on the other side in sort of a circular, spirally fashion. So I'm going out towards me on the bottom and in towards the fabric on the top. And I'm just going and going and going and going. Um, Eventually, it will close, and eventually, well, not eventually, you don't really see it because it's black. I'm really sorry about that, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but you just keep on going, keep on sewing, keep on sewing, keep on sewing, 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 okay, Ben's shaking his head. Hi, I'm here too. Ben's here too! I was told to just sit here in the corner quietly. I didn't specifically say that, you know. S specifically. May I, may I might have given him a look. Five looks. <laughs> I've been counting. Uh, well, this is a very important lesson. Is it? Is it though? It's a very important lesson. Look and double check and triple check before you cut your fabric. Alrighty, so you see here we have the Lisa Fong doing a whip stitch. Oh, and it's excellently executed. Oh, and another one. And another one. And, oh, oh, she stuttered. Oh. <laughs> and, oh, she's six a landing. Uh, and as you can see on the camera, you can barely see it. You don't even notice it. I'm going backwards, just in case. I like to do this for all of my buttons as well. I go over the entire hole twice because I really don't want anything to fray. I want it to be secured and why well, I don't want it to fall off or apart while I'm wearing it. <laughs> That's really important. We all make mistakes. And here we are back to the stitching Olympics. We see Lisa Fong doing another whip stitch. It's another whip stitch. Have you ever seen a whip stitch so fast? Such nimble fingers. It's, it's probably because... Okay, it, I'm tying it off. We can it, stop. It's probably because the gift of editing is strong with the Fong. And you see here, now she's tying a knot. She probably learned that from the Boy Scouts. It's uh, a square knot. Ah, uh, I see. Google, Google it. Never. It's a very strong knot. You can't even see it. All right, moving on. I think this is the leg. Make sure you're stretching it so that it stretches around the circumference of your leg, horizontally. <laughs> because if it doesn't, then you're gonna have a very hard time getting your foot through it. And I'm just, oh no wait, it's the arm. Never mind, it's the arm. Same, same principle applies on the stretch. Make sure you stretch your fabric to make sure it stretches in the direction 
of much stretchiness, or else you can't get your hand through it. Do you need a hand? Eh. Do you need a, <laughs> do you need a hand with the commentary? Do I do. It? Okay. Here we see. Color commentary. <laughs> Color commentate this. Here we see the Lisa Fong, um, yet again, uh, coming in for the third time at the Sewing Olympics. Um, oh, this is my elbow. That mark is my elbow, I believe. And, well, that's very important because I took my measurement, my circumference around my elbow, and that's where that pin is. It's probably like four five inches what it looks like and I'm just following and connecting it to the the top in a sleeve like fashion and that pin was my wrist and my wrist is quite small so it keeps on getting smaller and I just follow the two points and connect them as you see here. I can put my hand through it. That's important. <laughs> uh, uh, as you see here, the, the phone um, coming in on her fifth time <gasps> at the Show Olympics. Um, <laughs> this is very a... important. Okay. Um, if this weren't black material, I would make a cut out of my hand and sharpie a around it so I could have an imprint of my hand. I do not have that. So I'm going to guesstimate it with these pins. You know, I saw a horror movie like this once. <laughs> um, it did not end well. Um, this would be a good time to get the chalk out. There is a uh, fabric chalk. I tried a pencil because I thought maybe the graphite might rub off and it'll be shiny. It didn't. Um, but a chalk square or chalk pencil would be great in the situation because it would come up and you would be able to see it on the black. Um, if you want to do the pinning method, be careful, um, you're warned, you might stick yourself pretty good, um, but yeah, just pinning at the very tips of my fingers and around, making sure that the fingers are one long enough and the fingers are wide enough, and since it's stretchy, it's okay if it's a little bit small. And I'm just marking where my fingers are ending so I know where to turn around on the sewing machine. Yeah, it sort of looks like a hand, right? Yeah. I keep telling you, I've seen this in a horror movie once. <laughs> and here we see the Lisa Fong coming back for the 20th time at the Sewing Olympics. <laughs> See as how I'm not she, that old, Ben. See how she flawlessly cuts against the pins or with the pins. Is the twenty? Is the sewing Olympics like five times a year? I mean, I, I could do that. I'm not. I'm not fifty. I swear. There's I'm one, only thirty-two. There is one every five seconds. <laughs> um, right here is. Oh, oh dear, don't- Horror movie. I keep telling you, horror movie. Probably don't do that. I Ow. did not cut around the fingers because as you can see here, I'm taking it to the sewing machine. I'm using the pins as a guide and sticking the needle in, pushing it around, uh, and continue, I continue to sew. If you cut this previously, then it's gonna be very hard, very hard to keep the fabric together. And then it's probably gonna take three or four or five times as long to sew this. Save yourself the trouble and cut it afterwards. Um, right here, I'm just pushing and pulling to help the machine sort of, you know, move the fabric because this particular fabric likes to stick a little on the foot um, and I'm just sort of helping it along I'm nudging it I'm nudging it that's how my machines going up normally fast is it is it's it, the power of Pikachu is it is it, is it taking uh, it's performance taking, enhancing drugs yeah it's it, Pikachu's electricity miss Lisa Fong 
has been disqualified. No. <laughs> but using performance enhancing drugs in her. It's not machine. a drug. It's. <laughs> it's a Pikachu. It's not a drug. Okay. This is this isn't the electric type gym. <laughs> Aren't you glad I'm here? So glad. Mm -hmm. I love how like the corner says biscuit. <laughs> it just says biscuit and chewer. And now is the time to put this on to make sure that all of the fingers fit. Um, it's a little snug, which is pretty good. There's a glove on the other hand. <laughs> I figured out if you make the small, if you make the gloves a little bit small, it might stretch enough so where you can use your phone. So it'll, it'll know. Oh, yeah. There's something here trying to uh, do stuff. I sh I, the phone should do that stuff. And now I'm cutting the fingers. Just trimming it up. You can get pretty close to the seams on spandex. It doesn't fray, which is pretty nice. You can you can cut real close to it. Into the fray. <laughs> this first glove was actually a tiny bit small, so I sewed a little bit bigger on the next Ooh. glove. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hand. Horror movie. All right. Lastly is the legs. This is the rest of my fabric. And I didn't have quite enough. I was probably like four inches too small, uh, too short. But thankfully, this is spandex and it stretches. So I took all of my measurements. Um around the thigh area, and I just fit it to where it fit. Well, you know what they say if the glove fits, right? Oh no, no, <laughs> these are the legs. Uh, never skip leg day, kids. I'm up. <laughs> yes. So, I am taking that 8 inches, sectioning it off with the pin on top and pin on bottom of the 8 inches, sewing, or pinning the curve of the leg. Well, it was a little bit short of eight inches because of the shortness of um, fabric, but it stretches. So going from the crotch to the knee is about right there. And I just take it in to where the circumference is divided by two. And that's that. That's my knee. I just go up. And this was actually a pretty good fit, even though it was four inches small. I even had to take in the knee afterwards. Um, when you actually try it on, you can pinch the fabric, put a pin in where it's pinched so it stays pinched, and then go back and sort of adjust the fabric so you can sew it down. Yeah. And that's my leg. Ooh. Such a nice leg, right? And now we have the foot. I just took the length of my foot, plus the three inches of the, the tallness of my heel. Um... Let's see, I took the ankle measurement around my ankle, and that's the first two pins. So that's about how wide it should be. I'm also making it a little bit taller than three inches so that the excess on the bottom can wrap around whatever shoe that I put in it. Um, that's pretty key for my bodysuits. Um, I put the shoe in the bodysuit. So I don't have like boot covers or anything, it's just built in. And I'm just gonna sew this down, or cut it out and sew it down, sew it down, and then attach all of the things together. Yep, just checking. It fits. 
I guess foot gloves. There you go. It, it, it looks like a foot, right? Oh, yeah. I guess it was tight. And again, cutting this out. Gonna just sew along those lines where the pins are. Keeping the ankle open. Alright. I used a smaller stitch. A smaller stitch length. That was the two. And I have it on a straight stitch. You can use a um, stretch stitch if you would like. Um, that is the three parallel lines um, on top of each other. Or three parallel lines and then three parallel lines um, above or next to it. That is the stretch stitch. It doesn't come out and it is very strong and it stretches with the fabric. Although the straight stitch, which does not particularly stretch in its design, it does stretch with the um, with the fabric quite a bit. And if you pop your seams, um, it's no big deal. Just go back, sew it maybe uh, maybe with the stretch stitch. I personally don't like the stretch stitch very much because if you put it down and you sew with it then it's almost impossible to get out. Um, but if you have a pattern that you are particularly fond of, or you know that will work, I would recommend the stretch stitch. Very, very highly recommend it. Also, I just pushed the, um, the reverse handle, so at the end of the stitch, it sort of locks in place. And over here, I'm just gonna sew the sides together. Oh, no, wait, I think that was the sides. I think I sewed the sides together. And now I'm carving out the front of the leg hole. Because otherwise, it would be a little bit baggy. Um, that is the nature of your underwear. The front is typically shorter than the back. And I'm just putting the pins there so you can see exactly where all of those cuts are. It's not too terribly dramatic, um, but that's that's all you need. Also, I'm needing to cut out the neck hole, and that's about three or four inches down. It might seem like a lot, but when you actually put it on, it gets pretty. It's a pretty high neck just shy of going up your neck. Cutting that off, making sure I don't cut all the way. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. I had another cut, but I patched it, and then I just put all of these together, all of these together, putting the limbs on. Yeah, but you should not close the limb holes on your first sew through. <laughs> or else you're gonna have to take it out because you need to put the arms or the legs back on. And right here, the shoulders are still open because you still need to put the Velcro on. So I really don't like bag zippers. Oh, speaking of back, mine was a little bit baggy in the back, so I put some pins here, and I'm gonna sew that down later. So it curves to me. And here's the Velcro. Just sort of put it on one side, folded one side on the, the opposite side over, and put the Velcro on that side. And when it goes on, it goes on. And you don't have to get in through a zipper that everyone sees in the back. One side, and the other side. And once it's all sewn together, you have a bodysuit! Also, stay tuned for next week, I'm gonna show you how to make it into... Wasp! Among various other cosplays I have for the future, um, lots of bodysuits in the future, uh, be sure to stay tuned every Tuesday 
Like, subscribe, comment down below what you want me to do next, and I'll see you later!